In tonight's 60 Minutes Classic, we revisit a genuine classic, Shirley MacLaine. She's worked in show business now for more than 50 years. And when I first profiled her back in 1984, it was a very good year for Shirley. Dancer, singer, actress, author, mother. She'd been nominated for Best Actress for her performance in Terms of Endearment, and she won. Well, that same year, 1984, is when she and I first talked about her preoccupation with her past lives and extraterrestrials. And today, at 66, she's taken all of that one step further, as she told me when we recently sat down and looked at our original story. We're going to see the film that we did 16 years ago. Did, you, did you show me dancing? Not yes. Before. You were 50. Okay. Oh, my God, right. You were 50. And you were only, what, 101 then? That's correct. Let's take a look at some of that original oh, God. piece, okay? God, I don't know if I'm going to like this. <laughs> you love this. You're approaching 50. 50 for an actress whose capital are her looks, her legs, her dancing ability, her acting ability. 50 is a kind of watershed, no? But it's getting better. I mean, there's some things, I suppose, that will, will sort of get rusty, but I'd move off of them anyway, whether I was 50 or not. Meow, 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 meow. She was born Shirley McLean Beatty in Richmond, Virginia. And she had a younger brother whose name is Warren. She was a chorus gypsy on Broadway at the age of 18. And in 1954, she got her first big break when she was understudy to Carol Haney in Pajama Game. Just the way the movies say it is supposed to happen, the star got sick, the understudy went on, a movie producer was in the audience, and the rest is history. Acting, dancing, singing have never been enough for Shirley. Her appetites are diverse. She has been a political activist. She's made a documentary film on China. She's written three best-selling books. Some of her film performances have been better than the films themselves. She's made 39 of them all together. Among them, Irma La Douce, The Apartment, The Turning Point, and Some Came Running. Ladies and gentlemen, Shirley McLean. You're a compulsive overachiever, no? No. No. Oh, that's not true. <laughs> I mean, you sing and you dance and you write and you climb mountains and you make money and you support orphanages in third world countries. And, and you have an extraordinary discipline, obviously. Well, hmm. I can be a lazy slob, you'd be surprised. For the past several years, she has spent endless time searching for her spiritual identity. She's peered into corners few of us have cared to explore. That search is the subject of her book, Out on a Limb. It deals mainly with her belief in reincarnation. About that last book. I'm told that good friends said, Shirley, for Pete's sake, don't write about your karmic destinies. It wasn't for Pete's sake, it was for Christ's sake, it's for God's sake. I mean, on your mother and your friends and everything that is, is yeah, sacred, I mean, don't do this. That, that my daughter was my mother in a prior life and my karmic destinies probably indicate that I used to be a prostitute before and, and you were a man at one time and you believe in extraterrestrial beings. And forgive me for being an old-fashioned... No, that's easy. Your attitude is easy. It's very easy to be cynical like you are just now. Skeptical. Well, I it had a panache word. of sarcasm in okay. it. Okay. A, a large dash of yeah. it. You really believe that you lived lives before oh, and... Oh, yes, ma'am. I don't. There's no doubt in my mind about it. <laughs> and you really believe in extraterrestrial... Have the, do they come visit you on the porch? 
Now you're being unpleasant, Wallace, is what you're saying. Yes, this is what I was a little afraid of. But oh. you don't have to be that unpleasant. It doesn't become you, you know. I mean, I'm just speaking of my own experiences and my own desires, and it's a kind of a childlike wonder that could uh, really possibly speculate on other dimensions. What's wrong with that? Surely, what the heck has all of this got to do with singing and dancing? <laughs> I mean this seriously. Because you know, it's as we sit, As we sit here and we talk, and it's, and it's fascinating, good yeah. talk. And then I think about those long legs and... Nothing wrong with lower chakra stuff at all. <laughs> it's all part of the same body. <laughs> After taking two months off, she had just five days of rehearsal to get that body back in shape for her opening in Las Vegas. Two weeks of two shows a night, seven nights a week. I think I've gained weight. I think all those vanity things. I think... I think I was really sweet with you. I've gotten crankier in my old age. I don't believe it. I have. Still live alone? Yep. But currently there's no guy? Currently? No. Do you think you're over the hill for that kind of thing? Thank you for putting it so diplomatically. I think the hill one has to trudge in order to understand a man's baggage is more of a trek than I'd like to take right now. I'm very happy. You still have the house in Malibu mm -hmm. where they, they landed on, on my front porch. On your front porch. Right. Shirley right. MacLaine's abiding interest in her past lives hasn't faded since last we met. Quite the contrary. A while back, she made a daunting pilgrimage on foot across northern Spain, called the Camino. The Santiago de Compostela Camino. What is it? It's a trek that uh, thousands, millions of people have taken over the last three, four, five thousand years. Charlemagne took it, Chaucer, St. Francis of Assisi. Shirley chronicles her 500-mile journey in her just-released book, her ninth, The Camino. Why? Along her trek, Shirley writes, she was guided by visions, guided by people from ancient civilizations who became the gateway to her past lives. You were a Moorish girl. I was a Moorish girl who was tending to the sick on the Camino path. So I had been there before. And then as I pursued... <laughs> are you okay with this? Mm -hmm. uh, as time progressed, I went uh, deeper, is all I can say and back into time further. You wrote that you had an affair in this life with Olaf Palme? With this lifetime, yeah. Yeah. Who was at the time? Swedish so Prime Minister. Prime Minister of Sweden. Who, in a past life, Olaf Palme, was Charlemagne. Yeah, that's what it said in my vision. With whom you also had an affair? Yes, but a one of many. Back when you were a Moorish girl? That's right. And you witnessed androgynous people giving birth Yes. To androgynous children, and you were androgynous. Yes. What's the public reaction to your book going to be, do you imagine? Well, I think Jay Leno and, God forbid, David Letterman will have a field day. Now, the public, oh, I think you'd be surprised how mainstream some of my stuff is. And there's more about Shirley's journey, she proudly told us, on her newly launched ShirleyMcLean.com. Why do you have a website? It's a portal. You know, here's what happens. If you're somebody like me, and there's millions of us out there who are interested in astrology, meditation, numerology, mm -hmm. feng shui, um, aging, 
you should log on to it for that. <laughs> uh, good health, women's health particularly, UFO footage. I've got the best UFO footage in the world. You ought to go down to Mexico and talk to your cohorts there. I know you don't want to because you don't want to believe it, but they're there. And these When she's earthbound like the rest of us, there's a new Shirley MacLaine. Start on the cop's feet. She's now a motion picture director of an independent film called Bruno. It is about the triumph of individuality. That was excellent. We're going to do it again. Bruno has not yet been released. I saw it over the weekend at home. I thought it was just wonderful. Oh, thank wonderful. You. Thank you. And she also co-stars in Bruno. You know, for a little boy who wears dresses, you've got a hell of a set of balls, kid. I know. <laughs> It's the tale of a nine-year-old boy who has a penchant for wearing girls' dresses, much to the dismay of his Catholic school's mother superior. What the hell's he doing in a dress? Expressing myself. Besides, it's not a dress, it's a holy vestment. Shut up. Isn't it the best room in my really? Now 66, Shirley takes good care of herself, but she is hardly a health nut. Last month, she went in for a coronary examination with an interesting result for her and for the doctors. Walked out and there's six doctors in the room. They said, sit down. I thought, oh my God, they're going to tell me I've got, you know, 85 minutes to live. What do you eat? And I told them the truth. Really? Uh, do you drink? Finally, I said, guys, am I going to die? Do I have to have a transplant or a bypass? What they said? She says that after sufficiently grilling her, the doctors said she was in tip-top shape. So they said, well, how do you live? How do you do this at your age? Now, I get up and I said, well, doctors, what I do is I get in touch with my past life repo. I have a real good kind of dimensional truth about that. Sometimes my extraterrestrial friends talk to me, and I do my feng shui in my house, and I have uh, frequencies that I get in touch. And little by little, one by one, these doctors left the room. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a joke. <laughs> She's a nutcase. <laughs> but she's healthy. Wait a second. She's a nutcase, but she's healthy. Do you resent that? The people, some of them, some of them watching this. Oh, I know. She's a nutcase. Listen, they said that about uh, Christopher Columbus. They certainly said it about Jesus Christ. Ho, oh, oh, ho, they killed him for it. I mean, they say it about everybody who's innovative. I think I'm innovative. I'm old enough to have earned the right to be innovative and get a big kick out of the people who think I'm a nutcase. You still having a good time? I'm having a great time. 60 Minutes 2 will continue in a moment. Determined, and she won. Well, that same year, 1984, is when she and I first talked about her preoccupation with her past lives and extraterrestrials. And today, at 66, she's taken all of that one step further. As she told me when we recently sat down and looked at our original story. We're going to see the film that we did 16 years ago. Did, you, see? did you show me dancing? Not yes. You were 50. Okay. Oh, my God. Right. You were 50. And you were only, what, 101 then? That's correct. Let's take a look at some of that original oh God. piece, okay? God, I don't know if I'm going to like this. <laughs> you love this. It's a kind of watershed, no? But it's getting better. I mean, there's some things I suppose that it will, will sort of get rusty, but I'd move off of them anyway, whether I was 50 or not. Meow, 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 meow. Meow, 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 meow. She was born Shirley McLean Beatty in Richmond, Virginia. And she had a younger brother whose name is Warren. You're approaching 50. 50 for an actress whose capital are her looks, her legs, her dancing ability, her acting ability. 50.
In tonight's 60 Minutes classic, we revisit a genuine classic, Shirley MacLaine. She's worked in show business now for more than 50 years. And when I first profiled her back in 1984, it was a very good year for Shirley. Dancer, singer, actress, author, mother. She'd been nominated for Best Actress for her performance in Terms of Endearment.